Hello and welcome to Wednesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and I've got a fog of war puzzle to have a go at called Foggy Nonsense by Oddly Even and I've had a quick read of the rules of this one um, and I should be I should be used to doublers after yesterday's puzzle by Agent which was a fabulous puzzle but this one has got the digits 0 to 8 having to be put in um, which is going to play with my mind no doubt but yeah, so if you've never seen Fog of War Sudoku before, it's probably the most amazing innovation uh, in Sudoku for, over the last couple of years. And the idea is that you you have to use logic. You could guess. Um, and I think that's one of the things people don't understand about Fog of War puzzles. They, they sort of get stuck and they guess to reveal what's under the fog. And then don't really like the puzzle as much whereas the, the idea the constructor oddly even who is a brilliant constructor will have designed it so that by looking at the cells that we can see we can deduce things and if we place digits close to the fog um, that we've deduced logically will clear the right amount of fog that the constructor intends that will gradually reveal the whole puzzle to us it's i i have to say i'm a massive fan of these um Mark and I have been busy testing puzzles actually for a new app that we have coming out. It, it, sh it should be out in weeks rather than months, um, uh, full of Fog of War Sudokus. So do look out for that, set by some of the great and the good of the Sudoku community. Pretty exciting stuff. Um, what else can I tell you about before we kick off and we, we, we solve the puzzle? Well, we are streaming tonight. We are returning to streaming. We are going to play yeah, well, that's not bad actually it's nearly in the right place isn't it dungeons and diagrams this is the third part third stream we'll be doing of dungeons and diagrams we might be able to finish the, the game we shall see <laughs> uh 10 o'clock uk time uh we'd love to have your company i'll try and remember to put a link on the screen other than that what else over on over on patreon we have got glum hippos uh snake egg sudoku hunt which loads of you have been um playing absolutely brilliant stuff so oh, hang on no i've made that too big aha sorry i think i have yeah i did make it too big um so if you haven't had a go at that still plenty of time you've got five more days uh, before the closing date for the competition and that is more than enough time uh, to solve all the puzzles in the hunt so do get cracking uh, and if you do get stuck don't forget over on the discord server there is a patreon only chat channel where people do and have been known to exchange ideas about how to go forwards in some of the harder puzzles. Um, other than that, let's let's do some uh, birthdays and other announcements. I'll start I'll start off by wishing my friend John, uh, who probably is watching this video. I'm I'm delighted. I, I have got friends in real life who actually watch the channel for the pleasure of doing variant Sudoku, um, which is great. One of those is my 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 great friend John who's been a mate of mine from golf for too long than we probably care to remember. Uh, but John is getting his first tattoo tomorrow. <laughs> uh, he did say if this is the extent of his midlife crisis, it's probably it's probably not bad. But he's having a large tattoo of a lark done on his arm. Um, and I, I'm, uh, well, I'm looking forward to seeing the result, John. Good luck with that. Um, next... Uh, a shout out to Victoria who sent um, who sent me a picture of this so Victoria's been watching the channel since the pandemic and when we do a longer video she likes to crochet while she's uh, while she's watching and look at look at this this is actually a real Sudoku that we've featured it was called butterfly by Sam Kappelman lines and apparently Victoria says that this this is king size piece that involves 5000 yards of yarn isn't that unbelievable and and the and the, the 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 numbers which are in the correct position for sam's puzzle are removable so you can so, so if victoria ever gets bored with this particular sudoku uh, it is changeable so victoria thank you for sending us that i think that's absolutely magic and um i'm in awe of your crocheting skills now some birthdays to do as well let's start off with Audra Audra over there in Saskatchewan uh, your husband David wrote to us and said it was your birthday today and could we wish you a happy birthday and and he sent me a picture of where you're going for dinner you're going to a place that serves this 
which is some sort of chocolate concoction. Let me, let me try and increase the size of it. With, is this raspberry sauce on the top? That looks spectacular. That does also, this chocolate concoction does look like it's got a lot of icing involved in it. So, wow, order, happy birthday. It's, I think you're going to have a very nice meal. Um, next, Henry. Henry, you've turned 25 today. And I know this because your partner, Gabrielle, wrote to us and said you'd appreciate a shout out. So, Henry, I hope you have chocolate cake. Um, next, Johanna. I, it probably is Johanna rather than Johanna. Probably Johanna. Um, your father, Nicholas, over there in Germany, wrote to us and said that the two of you enjoy solving the harder puzzles together. And, and, and your father left me a somewhat cryptic message about your, your age. Uh, Johanna. And I'm going to go for 33. I hope, I hope I've understood the cryptic riddle correctly. Uh, many happy returns. And then finally, Russ. Russ, you've turned 44 today. A less cryptic riddle was provided for me by your mum, uh, Susanna, who described you as a polymath, a top solver on Logic Masters Germany, um, an ex-New York Times crossword puzzle writer, an award-winning Euro gamer, a tournament director at the World Board Gaming Championship, and a lifetime lover of chocolate cake. <laughs> Russ, I hope you have a great birthday today. Thank you for watching the channel. Now, let's do some solving. Let's have a look at Foggy Nonsense by Oddly Even. These are the rules. Put the digits 0 to 8 once each in each row, column, and box. So, 0 to 8. I must get that into my head. Um, doublers. One cell in every row, column, and box is a doubler. This cell counts as double its value for the following rules. Each of the digits, 0 to 8, appears exactly once in a doubler cell. So that is exactly the rule set we had yesterday regarding doublers. So if this was a doubler, then, let's, then there couldn't be any more doublers in any of those squares. And let's say this was a doubled one. I'm going to make it a small one in case one happens to be the digit that's correct there because it will reveal the fog and I don't want to do that. Um, if this was a one and that was a doubler, then this square could not be a doubled one as well. So there's got to be one of each digit is doubled in the puzzle. Um, now, XV, values on an X sum to 10. Oh, notice it says there values. So that's, that's catering for the point about doublers. So there's an X domino there and the values in these two cells. Don't forget the values might be adjusted by doublers have to sum to 10. Um, values on a V sum to 5, so those two have to sum to 5. Digits in a cage may not repeat, and values in a cage sum to the to total in the top leftmost corner of the cage. And then fog of war. The, di the grid is partially covered in fog. Placing correct digits will clear the fog from the surrounding cells. And that is, I think, all the rules. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now, I get to play. Let's get cracking. Now, you can immediately see there's something weird going on because in normal Sudoku, you can't possibly have three V clues in the same box because in normal Sudoku, a V is either a 1-4 pair or it's a 2-3 pair and there are no other options. So here, here, I suppose, we could have 0 and 5, couldn't we? Right. So here we... Right, okay, here is a way of thinking about this, therefore. So, those six cells, we are being told the values in those six cells sum to 15. Well, what's the minimum values of six digits in this puzzle? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 sum to 15. Now, well, okay, so what we do know is that that is what these digits are. What we don't know, I'm just, I'm realising, is I don't know whether the zero is doubled in there. Because if the zero was doubled, those would still add to 15. Obviously, no other digit in there could be doubled because it would then add up to more than 15. So... So perhaps what I was, what I might have been better doing then is to pencil mark the other digits, which have got to be six, seven, and eight. Hmm. 
Hmm, okay, well these two are definitely not doubled because they're on X dominoes, so those are not doubled. And these two digits, therefore, they can't be zeros, so they've got to be the complements of 6, 7 and 8, which sum up to 10. So those digits are either 2, 3 or 4, and they're on Vs, so right, yeah, okay, so these are on Vs. And we know one of the Vs to work is going to be 0, 5, where the 0 might be doubled, but it is 0 and 5. So these are not 0 and 5. And neither of these can be 4, because 4 couldn't go with, with a 2, 3 or 4 to add up to 5, could it? So the doubler, yeah, so the doubler is one of these in this box. All of these are natural is what we're now learning. And what, okay, so what, now we could ask where, where the, where, yeah, so this is a zero 05, isn't it? That's what we're learning. That's zero 05, but we don't know whether the zero is doubled. And there's something going on here though. <laughs> so what hang on hang on hang on there's an x domino here now if that's a five i feel like that's not going to work if that's a five it can't be doubled I was I was thinking could this be ten zero but it can't it can't be if that's a, this okay I think this it might be the break in this can't be a five because if it's a five then this has to be a five because this can't be doubled five because it'll break the v and we get two fives in the same row so this is not a five so that is zero that oh, that's right good okay so that's zero um, I don't know whether that's doubled or not. But I do know that's not doubled, so that's five. So so one of these two is doubled. It's so really ludicrous having to think about a doubled zero. That's um that is not doubled. Um and it Ah, okay, well this no, sorry, I can now see this is not doubled. Because if it was doubled, how would you make this work? Yeah. In fact, yeah, that is a good question. This cell has to have a value of 10. So that must be a doubled 5. That's the only way we can do it. So that's 5, that's doubled. That's not doubled. This is doubled. That's therefore green. I like that beginning. That was very, very cool. Now, um, okay, the other, the, the other thing I'd noticed about this box is that the, the one in this box is in one of those squares, which I think means, that, well, it does mean that the four is in one of those squares, which means, okay, which means the six is in one of these squares, doesn't it? Which means this square is not a six. And that is going to be important, presumably. Right, okay. It's going to be something to do with this 21 cage. Because this 21 cage has not stopped going yet, has it? It starts here, it goes there, 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 but it's still going. So it's got at least four different numbers in box two. And it might have more than that, but for those four different digits are going to be at least zero, one, two, and three. None of them are doubled. So they are adding up to at least six. So if this was doubled eight, that would be worth 16. 16 and 6 is 22, which is why this is a 21 clue. That is a 7. Okay. Now, that's going to allow us to work out these um, X's and V's, I think. Because these two squares now have to be even um, in order to complement their evenness of their 6 and 8. So these two squares now are odd. And we've got... 
we've got a 1 3 pair in row 2 uh, but let's come back to the mathematics of this then so we've got 14 these can't add up to more than 7 so they must they must be 0 1 2 4 mustn't they there's no other way of doing that they, we can't extend this any further because to do so those extra digits would then be a minimum of 0 1 2 3 4 and 4 which is 10 which adds up to more than the 7 that we're, we're needing so we need to make these exactly add up to 7 and there's only one way to do it right and now ah so now I get a 1 there by Sudoku good that's good um, these become 0 2 4 these become 6 7 and 8 Now, can we go any further than that? Maybe. Um, there's a 14 cage here that's at least comprising of those squares. Just looking at the sort of grid furniture we've got going on. Yeah, okay, that's lovely. That's lovely, I can see what that's doing. Right, so the first question we ask is where's 7 in box 2? And by Sudoku outrageous being made to do sudoku in these sudoku puzzles but there is a seven down here now this square is six or eight imagine it was eight for a moment where would that then go in this box well it would go in these two squares and you'd have seven plus eight and these two squares would have to sum to minus one that won't work so that's got to be a six seven pair which means this digit itself is a six which means that's a four that's a one that's a three that's a two this is an eight um, now we can go further than that can't we because these two squares have to sum up to no more than one so the only way that works is if they are zero and one and this cage doesn't go any further so let's lose the purplification these squares now are eight and three and eight that's what they are so these squares are two five and oh I was trying to think what's the other digit that's missing it's zero that's the other digit yes I missed the zero and now I've got one one three and four there mm, okay so this is suddenly where I get nervous because unless I am missing a trick which I could be I do not see the only thing I think we can do is this X because I don't see how anything in the rows is going to be resolved. Oh, I'm getting attacked by a fly. Go away, fly. Oh, it flew out of the window. Very good. Um, so let's think about this X then. I suppose, okay, so one of the normal options that we'd have for an X is 1, 9. Now that's not available in this puzzle. So this can't be too... The thing is it could have a doubler if it's got a doubler well hang on let's complete the logical thought it's not two eight it's not three seven and it's not four six and it's not one nine so it does have a doubler I don't quite know how that's going to work yet if it's got a doubler then it, it's got it's got and it's got two even values on it and one at least one even digit because and the way I'm saying that is that the double digit here could obviously be expressed as 2x couldn't it or 2y so it's even so the other digit the complement of that in order to add up to an even number 10 is even must also be even so we're, we've either got we've either got 8 on here as natural with a double one or we've got four because that's the only other even digit or oh, oh zero no zero won't work because then we'd need double five and we've already used double five so if we have yeah we can't do double four two can we because double four two repeats the two so this is double eight one it's a one eight pair which means one and eight go down here by sudoku Ah, okay, and then I can actually do Sudoku. There's a 0 and 1 here. So this is 8, which means this is 1. The 1 is doubled, so we can, whoopsie, uh, we can express this. Actually, what we should also do, because it's sensible, is to try and keep track 
of all cells that can't be doublers, just in case. Um, yeah, this this is going to be interesting. I can see that straight away, or possibly this. But let, let's I've seen this, so let, let's go here. Okay, so how are we going to? This is a natural V domino. So it's either zero five. Well, it's not zero five because we've got zero and five looking at this square. One four. Well, it's not one four, so it must be two three. Now the <laughs> annoying thing about that is that as far as I can see, I don't actually know the order of those two digits. Which is a bit strange. Okay, there's a one over there by Sudoku. Zero. Zero is nearly locked into the 12 cage, but not quite. Zero's got zero's got three positions. I'm going to corner mark a zero into, into the box. And I, I mean this is one of the strange and lovely things about Fog of War Sudoku. So again, I might be missing a trick here, but how how is the next step of this puzzle not the resolution of this 12 cage? It must be, mustn't it? There's nothing else that goes that can possibly work. So okay, so it must be. Can you put zero in here? If you put zero in. You've got to accompany it with two digits. Oh, I see. Right, that's gorgeous, isn't it? It doesn't work because you've not got a doubler available. Right, so it's this it's this lovely trio. Zero, five, and seven are doing a lot of work here because if we put zero in here, we need to accompany it with two digits that add up to 12. Now, nine, three are not available today because nines are not available. Eight, four isn't available because eight isn't available. And five, seven isn't available because, well, if this was a zero, five, seven triple, which digit are you, of those are you putting in this one? You can't put any of them in. So this is not a zero, five, seven. And I don't think there's another way of making the extra 12 you'd need. So I think the point is we're, let, we're getting a zero here. Oh, although that didn't clear any. F I suppose it might not clear any fog, though, because that one's presumably cleared all the fog. So that's not perhaps a disaster, although it's a little bit worrying. So how do we do this then? Um, good question. So the lowest digit we've now got in there is, it's all got to be natural digits. One, well, okay, here is a simple point I've seen. Where is seven in this box? Now I don't think you can put seven in the 12 cage because the other two digits would have to add up to five naturally. And they can't be zero five. They can't be one four, and they can't be two three without breaking this square. So I think we get a seven. Okay, and now five is in this cage. So I need two more digits that add up to seven, that are not two five, and they're not one six. So they're three four. Right, that's how you do it. <laughs> three four five. I think. Um, now we can get rid of five from this one three from this one and four from this one so we get chocolate teapotted here but we do get this digit that's a two that's a three and that is a six okay and now we go we've revealed a little bit more stuff under the fog um no what i was about to say is gibberish so i'm not going to say that three is up there could be this row we need two three four and five so that square is only two or four which fe that feels a bit sus doesn't it this x domino what could that be ah but this could involve doublers Let's assume it doesn't involve a doubler. What can it be if it's not got a doubler involved on it? Then it could be 2, 8, couldn't it? It can't be 3, 7 or 4, 6. So one possibility is 2, 8. Or it involves a doubler. 
And if it involves a doubler, what is the double digit going to be? Well, it could be a double two, I think. A double two and a six. That doesn't seem to clash, clash with anything. Um, it can't be double three. Oh, it can't be double four two, because that will break that square, which is interesting. And it can't be double five, because we've had double five. It obviously can't be double zero because you can't put, put accompany that with a 10. Right, so what we are actually learning here is subtle. We're learning that this domino has a 2 on it. Because either it's natural, it's a natural domino adding up to 10. In which case, I think it has to be 2, 8. Or it's involving a doubler. And the only one that seemed to work... We can't use double one again. We can't double zero. We can't double three. And we can't double four with a two. So we have to double two with a six. So this is either two six or two eight. I'm not sure whether it's got the doubler, but it does mean that squares a four, I think. Oh, didn't I didn't clear any fog. But I suppose we do now learn what these digits are. And they are 3, 5, 2, 3, 2, 3 and 5, in fact. Oh, sorry. So is it this? <laughs> it's probably this X domino I meant to look at, which I now notice can't have a doubler on it. So this is... N well, what is, this is 2, 8, isn't it? Yeah, this is... This is 2, 8. That's all it can be. Yes, it can't be 1, 9, that's not available. It can't be 3, 7, it can't be 4, 6, and it doesn't involve a doubler. So it's 2, 8, and we know that the 2 must be low. So that's 2, that's 8. This does involve a doubler now. The 2 here is doubled. And that means one of those squares is doubled in box 6. Uh, this is now a 0 by Sudoku. That means we've got a 2, 4 pair here. All of this... Is, is now green. These two digits are 5 and 7 by Sudoku. So these are 4, 6, 8 by Sudoku. These digits are 0, 1 and something. Uh, 7. Okay, and now these digits at the bottom of this column are 6 and 7. So it's probably going to be this 11. Oh, it might be this. There's a V that's emerged under the fog here. Or it's this 11 thing. 2-9 is not available for an 11 thing anymore, is it? Oh, right. 3-8 doesn't work because that's going to break that square. Right. So this has got this has got a doubler in it. Because it... Let's go through the options. It's not 2-9. It can't be 3-8 without breaking this square. It can't be 4-7 or 5-6. So all the natural ways of making 11 are ruled out. So, so there is a doubler in one of those, which means this is now not a doubler, which means it's the 6. Yeah, there we go. Now this is a 2, doubled. Ah, now that's on a V. So, so this is a 1 because that counts as four. So we've got a little bit more done there. This is not a one. All of these squares are green. All of these squares are green. This square is green. And we probably are meant to think about what the options are for this now, because actually, again, okay, okay, we're running into the same problem. Oh, hang on. No. Well, I can get that digit. That's an X domino that's natural because it doesn't involve a doubler. So those two have to add to 10. Right, so that's got to be an 8. That's now not an 8. Now... Well, the only thing I can see here which is... Uh, that's gorgeous. Right, I understand this. Okay, so now I can do this se sequence. Because 
which of the digits in this sequence is the double digit? It's not 2 and it's not 5. They've already been doubled. So there's a doubled 3 in here. Now, how do we make this X domino work then? And we, one option, which was my first thought, was, ah, I could just make this 3, 5. They add up to 8, but they don't, given the 3 is doubled. And the 3 must be doubled. So in fact, the only way of making 8, therefore, is to put the 3 into the 8 cage as a doubler and accompany it with not 5, but 2. Because the double 3 counts as 6, and that gets me a 5. Ah, that's gorgeous. That's really clever. Not of me, of course, but the, the constructor. That is very, very nice. So, so that's now not a 5 in this corner. Um, that's weird. It does nothing. Am I... Am I going crazy? Or does that, that, that doesn't do anything, I don't think. So it must be this or this. Okay, so let's think. What doublers have we got available now? There aren't that many. We can't double zero in here. That won't work. Um, because the other digit can't be 11. Doublers 1, 2 and 3 have dis disappeared. So this is either a double, it must be a double 4. Because double 5 is gone and double 6 is more than 11. So it's double 4, 3 is what we're putting in there. In, whoops, in some order. Which does give us a digit up here. So that's 2, that's 4. We've got a new cage that's just emerged there. Uh, that's 3, that's 8. I'm trying to say, does this, does this resolve this, or am I just... Six is doing stuff, actually. Six and seven, seven and five. This square is zero or one. Let's put in the options. These two digits are the same. And these digits are zero, one, Five or eight. And whichever one of these is doubled is a four. See again, I'm. I'm is that somehow resolved? Oh, it might be. I, I suppose it could be resolved by these digits. I hadn't thought of that. All right, let's think about this. So. Yeah, ah, two and three has gone away. Yeah, this is okay. Right, so this V domino. We, oh, which could involve a doubler, couldn't it? Because we haven't had a doubled zero yet. So I had a doubled zero. I can't have doubled zero because that's still going to make this zero five and that's still going to be broken by this. And this can't be two, three. So I think it has to be one, four and completely natural because no doubler that's useful is available double one's gone doubles two's gone double three's gone and double three is too big anyway so this is a one four pair and i know the order i'm going to claim yes okay that's good that is good now that oh i see and that four is is doing the the, the job of resolving where the doubler is here which we know is the doubled four so this turns green um there's a doubler in one of two cells in box in box seven. Four has a home at the in one of those three squares. That's definitely not a one. And that four is doing some work there in, in our chocolate teapot look. So that all gets resolved. Oh, I was about to say that becomes a 1-8 pair. It certainly doesn't. It becomes a 3-8 pair, I think, looking at the column. And these two digits become a 0-7 pair. So these digits are 2 5, two, five 6, I think. And that's not 2. So the doubler, right, okay. So the doubler in this box is a six. 
that's going to resolve that digit, I think. Because one of these is doubled, and it can't be 2 and it can't be 5, it must be 6. So the 6 must be in this domino, which means that square is a 5. That didn't clear fog. Hopefully that, oh, that 4 has probably cleared all the fog. Um, right, so this becomes a 2-6 pair. But if the 6, well, I know that the 6 is doubled. So if the 6 is doubled in the cage, it's worth 12, isn't it? So if that's a 6, it's 12. The, oh, that works. These two squares would have to add up to 3, but they could be, because that could be 0 and that could be 3. 0 and 3, does that give us a problem anywhere? I don't think so. All right, so what's the alternative? The alternative is that this is doubled 6 and this is a a natural 2. So these have to add up to 13. No, that's impossible. Right, so it's not that one. 7 would need a 6 with it, 0 would need a 13 with it. Both of those seem odd. Right, so there's a 6 in the corner. That is a 2, a natural 2, so we green it. That is a, na a naughty 6, which gives me a 6 here and a 7 here. Still Oh, that's quite good. The sort of Sudoku aspects of this are resolving this so that it does add up. So that feels like it's working. That's now become a 1. So that's a 1 and that's a 0. And these squares lose their ability to con include 1. That can't be 0, look. This ca Ah. Now, is this really just an 8? Or is that just me mispencil marking? 0, 5, 8. Seems to be, doesn't it? Seems to be... A zero. Yeah, that cleared the fog, so that's good. And now we're going to be able to pencil mark these squares with one, three, and six. So that's not one. What's this doing? Um, there is a two down here for sure. What else could we deduce? There's definitely a 7 in these squares. Uh, sorry, and then we must be able to get one more digit over here, I think. It's 0, isn't it? Oh, it's 0. Okay. So... So how do we resolve this? Oh, I know what we should be doing. We can work out now, presumably, what all our doublers are in every box. So we know that this one was a doubled 3, wasn't it? So I, ha I still haven't found the doubled 0, and I haven't found the doubled 8. Right. Oh, and the du right, the doubler here is not doubled 0, so it's doubled 8. So that is not a doubler. So actually, we can therefore green all of those squares. And the doubler in this box is a doubled zero. So it's in one of those squares, and all of these turn green. Now. Is it the 13 cage? I've not looked at that at all. I can't see anything else. Okay, the 13 cage has not got the doubled 8 in it. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> so, the 13 cage definitely goes... Well, it's definitely got to extend... It goes here, it goes here. We can see from the sort of grid furniture. But it's got to go further than that. Because these two can't add up to 13. In fact, here's a small point. There is definitely a 5 in one of those squares, isn't there? Actually, here's a thought. Uh, I, I might actually have to... I'm just going to get rid of the green for a moment for a reason that hopefully will become clear. I want to see where the fog is. Ah, yes, right. That's, that's, that's important. Okay, so look at this cage. Where does it live its life, this cage? And this cage is, you know, it's a little bit 
subdued and taciturn. It's the sort of Simon of this, this Sudoku. <laughs> it sits by itself quite a long way away in a corner. Um, it, it is the wallflower at the party. <laughs> this gauge um in the sense that look it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't want to leave the edge of uh, the edge of the grid it it can go into those five cells but it doesn't go into these because there's no cage to be seen there so we have to make the 13 total up yeah so the 13 total has to drop into one of these two squares only because if it takes the top row those are that's only adding up to seven so it has to take a digit from here and it can't take both these digits because one of these digits is a doubled eight so it picks up six or seven down here and it adds that to some combination of zero two and five but we're looking for an odd number overall and we know that five is in the cage we only need even numbers basically we can't we haven't got two odd numbers to add, so we can't take seven from down here. The only way this works, I think, is if we pick up a six from down here and we add that to seven more. Oh, the weird thing about that is, you know, I still don't know whether that squares in. <laughs> I know that two and five are counting. I know that. But there's loads of different ways of making the cage work. It could it could take all three digits because zero doesn't contribute anything to the total. So it could be that, it could be that, it could be that. I don't know what the cage looks like, but I do know, I suppose, that the, these are a six, eight pair. They don't include seven, which means this square is seven, I think. Ah, oh, I see. Okay, so that's... The, the reason that's useful yeah well the, yes the reason that's useful is disambiguating which one of these is the doubler isn't it because we can now see that the way the 13 cage is constituted is it's all three of these digits so that's seven plus six here undoubled so that's a six uh this is an eight doubled all of these now are definite oh well, well let's 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 stick with our ungreened grid for the time being six here does this one so that's six that's four now is it is it resolved now um it probably is somehow i just don't know how so this 13 cage is resolved. Uh, what on earth? What am I missing now? That's not a six. I don't think it's going to be that. No, 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 no. Well, what is it then? Do I have to actually I suppose this isn't a zero, is it? And we know that because zero is the double digit in this box. So zero can't go into this square. So that's a naked single. Is that what we're actually being told? Is this a naked seven? I would love it if that was true because that's really, no, it, that is, it is true. Yeah, that's absolutely brilliant. Good grief. Good grief. Yeah, so let's go through it. What are the digits that this is or could be? Now, before we had this epiphany about this eight being in its column, this could have been a doubled zero. Well, it can't be that now. It can't be one, two, three, or four. It can't be five, six, or eight. So it can only be seven. That's going to clear, well, most of the remaining fog, but it also does that digit look. Uh, that puts two in the corner. Okay, good. Uh, that's no longer seven, obviously. This is no longer six. 
Oh, has that been? Maybe that's been available for ages. I don't know. I, I did it. I did it my way. Um, I've got a one three pair here. So this is two, and that means that's three, which means that's zero, and that's going to clear the last of the fog. Remember uh, that the three was the doubler here. So we now know where all the doublers live, and they live in these positions. And all we have to do now is well where's eight in this row it's got to be here so that's got to be five which means that's five and that's zero that's four look oh oh okay and I, I hadn't thought about this but i was thinking that looks a bit deadly but it doesn't when we look at the x so we can fill that in this square's a five uh, all we've got to do is put 2, 4 and 8 in at the bottom. So the 8 goes in the middle, the 2 goes there and the 4 goes there. That's gorgeous. What a beautiful puzzle. Yes. Um, I, Gosh, big solve count as well. That is just sensationally good. Very enjoyable and, and really clever, actually. Really clever. Because the doubler rules were used in all sorts of different ways. And quite sneakily, if I may say so, oddly even quite sneakily on occasion the I like this bit here where we could see that the cage couldn't go anywhere it reminded me of me um, which other bits did I think were there were several bits actually I really liked there's sort of some parity ideas here and there it is yeah it's just a lovely puzzle a lovely puzzle let me know in the comments how you got on I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.